Why do we dream? It's a question as old as humanity itself. A journey into the mind's theater. So, what is a dream in the simplest of terms? A dream is a sequence of sensations, images, thoughts, emotions that pass through our minds during sleep. It's a form of involuntary consciousness. We're the star, the director, the audience of our own private movie. Unlike waking thoughts usually governed by logic and physical rules, dreams are often illogical, surreal, emotionally charged. In this realm, you might find yourself flying over your childhood home having a conversation with a historical figure running through what feels like thick molasses. These experiences are generated entirely within the brain. To understand how dreams happen we must first journey through the stages of sleep. Sleep isn't just a monolithic state of unconsciousness, it's actually a dynamic and highly structured process that our brain cycles through multiple times each night. Broadly we can divide sleep into two main types, non-rapid eye movement sleep and REM and rapid eye movement sleep REM. Each night we waltz between these states in a predictable pattern, with each full cycle lasting about 90 minutes. It's during this intricate dance that the conditions for dreaming are set. The night begins with NREM sleep, which is divided into stages from light sleep to deep slow wave sleep. In the initial stages, you're in a light sleep, easily awakened. Your brain waves start to slow down and your body begins to relax. You might see brief, fragmented images, hypnagogic hallucinations, like the fleeting sensation of falling. The main event for vivid dreaming is REM sleep. About 70 to 90 minutes after falling asleep, your brain bursts into a flurry of activity. REM sleep is truly the master architect of our most memorable dreams. It's the stage where the brain doesn't just think, it hallucinates. The vivid story-like dreams that we often wake up remembering are almost exclusively born from this unique neurochemical state. During REM, the brain is bathed in a different cocktail of neurotransmitters. Acetylcholine levels are high, norepinephrine levels are almost absent, serotonin levels are almost absent, this chemical shift is fundamental to the nature of dreaming. The absence of norepinephrine in particular creates a brain environment free from a key stress chemical. This has led to a fascinating hypothesis. REM dreaming might act as overnight therapy. By reactivating emotional memories from the day in a neurochemically safe environment, the brain can process difficult experiences and strip away their painful emotional charge. It's like re-watching a scary movie without the suspenseful soundtrack. You can process the plot without the intense anxiety. After a good night's sleep, a problem that felt overwhelming can seem more manageable. REM brain activity isn't random chaos, it's a highly specific pattern of activation. While we know how dreams happen, the question of why remains a subject of intense scientific debate. There isn't a single universally accepted theory. There's actually a collection of compelling ideas. One of the most prominent theories suggests that dreams are essential for memory consolidation. During the day, we pick up countless new pieces of information. Sleep, and especially dreaming, might be the brain's way of sifting through all these memories, deciding which ones to keep and which to discard. It strengthens the neural connections for important information and prunes away the irrelevant details. Another powerful theory centers on emotional regulation. As mentioned, REM sleep dreaming might act as a form of self-therapy. The brain revisits emotionally charged events from our waking lives but, in a state where those stress-inducing neurochemicals are suppressed, this allows for the processing of emotions but, without the usual physiological stress, it can help us find resolution for conflicts, soothe emotional wounds, and wake up with a calmer perspective. This sleep to forget, sleep to remember model, suggests we sleep to forget the emotional tone of a memory while still retaining the memory itself. A third perspective proposes that dreaming is a form of threat simulation. This theory suggests that dreaming evolved as a biological defense mechanism to simulate and rehearse responses to threatening events, providing a safe environment to improve perception and avoidance of dangers in waking life. It argues that the frequent occurrence of threat content in dreams is an adaptive advantage, allowing for repeated cost-free practice of survival skills against ancestral threats. For a long time, we have focused on the psychological and neurological functions of dreaming, trying to fit it into neat boxes like memory consolidation, emotional regulation. But here's where it gets interesting, and the mystery deepens considerably. The world of dreaming is filled with phenomena that challenge our simple explanations and push the boundaries of what we think we know about consciousness. These oddities suggest that dreaming is far more complex and stranger than we often imagine, hinting at capabilities of the human mind, that we are only just beginning to explore. 
The neat theories are a great start, but they do not fully capture the sheer weirdness of our nightly adventures. Consider the phenomenon of lucid dreaming. This is the experience of becoming aware that you are dreaming while the dream is still happening. For a lucid dreamer, the realization dawns, this is a dream. From that moment on, they are no longer a passive actor in a pre-written script. They can often exert a degree of control over the dream narrative, choosing to fly, conjure objects, confront a nightmare figure. This state represents a hybrid form of consciousness. The peculiarities of dreaming do not stop with lucid dreaming or bizarre content. The experience is riddled with paradoxes that defy easy explanation. One of the most common is the inability to perform simple actions. Have you ever tried to run in a dream only to find your legs moving in excruciatingly slow motion, as if wading through invisible quicksand, or have you tried to punch something, only to have your fist connect with all the force of a feather? This experience is likely a mental reflection of the physical paralysis of REM sleep. Your brain's motor cortex sends the command to run, but it receives no feedback from your immobilized limbs, creating a frustrating disconnect between intention and action. Another strange phenomenon is the difficulty of reading or telling time in a dream. Look at a clock. The numbers will appear jumbled or unstable. Look at text. The letters scramble or change each time you look away. That's because language and logic centers, especially in the left hemisphere, are less active during REM sleep. Meanwhile, visual and emotional centers run the show. The dream world is primarily visual and emotional, so precise symbolic processing like reading isn't fully engaged, hence the glitches. What about dreams that seem to predict the future? Science finds no psychic evidence, but there's a sensible explanation for this experience. Your dreaming brain is a masterful pattern recognition machine, and then there is sleep paralysis a terrifying cousin of dreaming. The world of dreams does not simply vanish when our alarm clock rings. Its echoes follow us into the daylight, profoundly shaping our moods, our creativity, our relationships, and our understanding of ourselves. Waking up from a pleasant dream can set a positive tone for the entire day. Conversely, a nightmare can cast a long shadow, leaving us feeling anxious and unsettled for hours. This emotional residue is a powerful reminder that our inner world and our outer world are deeply interconnected. The feelings generated in our dreams are real feelings, and they do not always respect the boundary between sleep and wakefulness. Dreams are also a wellspring of creativity and inspiration. The dreaming brain is a relentless innovator, forging connections our waking mind would dismiss. This unconstrained cognition can lead to genuine breakthroughs. Many artists, musicians, and scientists have famously credited dreams with providing the spark for some of their greatest works. Paul McCartney's Yesterday, the structure of the benzene ring. So, in this view, dreaming isn't just about organizing the past, but about inventing the future. Our dreams are a private, nightly brainstorming session. If we learn to listen, they become invaluable creative fuel. Beyond mood and creativity, dreams offer a unique window into our psyche. We have journeyed through the sleeping brain, explored the architecture of REM sleep, and considered the leading theories that attempt to explain our nightly narratives. We have seen that dreams are not just random mental movies, they are a fundamental biological process involved in memory, emotional health, creativity, problem solving. From the therapeutic power of processing emotions to the evolutionary advantage of simulating threats, the potential functions of dreaming are as rich and varied as the dreams themselves. The science of sleep has illuminated much, yet the core of the mystery, the full definitive reason why we dream, remains tantalizingly out of reach. The quest to understand dreaming is, in many ways, a quest to understand the last great frontier, the human mind. Each night, every single one of us becomes an intrepid explorer of our own consciousness. The bizarre landscapes and illogical plots of our dreams are not flaws in the system. They are evidence of a brain operating under a different set of rules, one that prioritizes emotional connection and creative association over waking logic. So I invite you to become a more active student of your own dreams. Keep a dream journal by your bed. When you wake, write down what you remember. What did you see? How did you feel? Share your dreams in the comments below. If you learned something, like this video and subscribe for more Science of the Mind. Sweet dreams.